All right, so we're going to do some definitions. And um, in the next few videos, we're going to go over these terms. Um, and they all are terms that we're going to be using quite a bit throughout the semester. So the terms that we are going to make sure that we know by the end of these first few introduction units are drug, therapeutic effect, side effect, untoward effect, drug of choice, efficacy, potency, placebo, double-blind experiment, and crossover study. So we'll be getting to these all in the coming slides. So the first I want to go over, we've already gone over what a drug is, um, is a therapeutic effect. So this is a term you're going to hear me say a lot, therapeutic effect or therapeutic uses for individual drugs. So a therapeutic effect or therapeutic use is a, an effect for which the drug is administered. For example, if you are taking an antihypertensive agent, the uh, effect for which the drug would be administered, the therapeutic effect would be to decrease the blood pressure. So that's what therapeutic effect is. A side effect is any effect of a drug other than the one for which the drug is administered. Um, most often times side effects can be predictable and they can occur even at therapeutic doses. So a side effect doesn't necessarily isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just an, an effect other than that for which the drug is administered. So if we go back to our um, example of a drug that decreases blood pressure, let's go with the, the um, type of drug I'm thinking of is a beta blocker. For example, it's one of the many drugs that can decrease blood pressure. So a beta blocker can decrease blood pressure, and that would be its therapeutic effect, but it can also cause a decrease in heart rate. Um, so that would be a side effect. Um, it's an, an, uh, an additional effect. A side effect can be harmful, or it can be, or it can just be any effect other than that for which the drug is administered. Side effects, like I said, are usually predictable. They're things we know about the drugs. We can anticipate. If we know how the drug works, we can anticipate the side effects that we're going to see. An untoward effect is a um, side effect, but it's potentially harmful or at best very unpleasant to the individual that is being administered the drug. Right, so an untoward effect could be, um, I guess in our blood pressure uh, example I just gave you, let's say it could cause dizziness and or fainting. That would be an untoward effect. So um, untoward effects and side effects are similar. It's just the untoward effect is a little bit either more unpleasant or potentially harmful for the patient, whereas a side effect isn't necessarily harmful for the patient. So they're very similar terms. Um, so you can see this cartoon here is trying to out it's trying to illustrate the, the term side effect. All right, so an allergic reaction. Now we're going to come back to this at the end of unit three, but I want to introduce it now because it was on our list. An allergic reaction to a drug is basically due to a hyper responsive immune system. So um, oftentimes allergic reactions are also called drug allergies. So allergies, there's a couple characteristics about a, of a drug allergy. First of all, the drug allergy will occur with even a very small amount of the drug being administered, so small doses of drugs. The severity of the reaction is usually proportional to the administration, to the dose of the drug. So the higher the dose, the more severe the reaction. The lower the dose, the less the severe react, less severe the reaction. Usually, aller so this is an allergy, this is like a patient specific, this is a hyper responsive immune system. So it doesn't cause this, re I guess a key to this actually, is it doesn't cause this reaction in everybody. Whereas a side effect would be something you would anticipate seeing in, in more, many people. But this is more unique to the patient and their immune system. So the symptoms of allergy are generally unrelated to the therapeutic uses of the drug themselves. Um, another thing to know about drug allergies is if someone's if a patient is allergic to one drug, they're oftentimes cross allergic to other drugs in the same class. And um, then the final thing here is a drug allergy generally it um, 
generally is going to only show up if the patient has been previously exposed to the drug. And that's kind of similar with allergies in general. Allergies tend to be more severe once somebody's immune system is kind of primed, right? So the immune system, so this is a hyper-responsive immune system. So the immune system has marked this thing as foreign. It's seen it before and it's decided it's antigenic. And so when it sees it again, because of memory, right, as we all know, once you've developed memory to something, the reaction is a lot faster and it's a lot more robust. So traditionally drug allergies require a previous exposure to the drug or a drug in the same class in the case of cross allergy. Okay, so as we get into the drugs, we'll talk about some allergic reactions that are kind of um, that are uh, oftentimes going to be seen with certain classes of medications. <clears throat> Excuse me. An idiosyncratic reaction. So now this is something that's very unexpected. There isn't any, and I guess I will say again, there there isn't any way to predict this. Like a side effect, you could predict. A toxic effect, you could predict. An allergy, to some degree, you can predict in the, in the sense that we know that certain drugs are people, that oh, pardon me, that, that uh, patients oftentimes are allergic to certain drugs, like, for example, the penicillins. Um, and then we also know the cross-reaction for the other drugs in those classes. Now, an idiosyncratic reaction is unexpected. The reaction is not related to the drug and it's not immune related, right? So this is very much a patient to patient kind of a deal. This, when we talked earlier in the previous video and I talked about um, pharmacogenomics, this is probably what's at play with idiosyncratic reactions, that patients have genetic differences that make them, um, that make their response to dr a drug be atypical. So it could be a mutation in, in an enzymatic pathway that's making somebody either more or less sensitive to the drugs. So that would be considered an idiosyncratic. There isn't any way to predict an idiosyncratic reaction. All right, um, hopefully those terms make sense to you. If that doesn't make sense to you, shoot me an email or, and, and we'll discuss it on either a discussion board or if we are in a hybrid setup, we can do it in our face-to-face -face time together. All right, so two more terms that we're gonna hear a lot are efficacy and potency. Efficacy and potency are terms that are related and they're oftentimes discussed at the same time, but they are t they have two distinct meanings. Um, efficacy is referring to the effectiveness of a medication. So it's how effective is that drug at producing a pharmacologic response? For example, how well does it relieve symptoms? So if we go back to our beta blocker act example, let's say we administer a beta blocker and it has the ability to decrease systolic blood pressure by 10 points. 10 millimeters of mercury. So some, it would take someone's blood pressure, let's say from 140 over 95 to 130 over 95 or 90. And that's the most it can do. That's the efficacy of the drug. That's how, how effective it is at relieving the symptom in this case of high blood pressure. The difference between efficacy and potency is potency is really re referring to how much of it you have to take. With efficacy, we don't really care. If we're just talking about efficacy on its own. We don't care how much you have to take. We just want to know what's the top, what's the max it can do in terms of re symptom relief, and that would be efficacy. Potency, on the other hand, is going to be looking at the dose. So potency is the amount of drug necessary to produce that pharmacologic response. So it's the dose. How much of it do you have to actually give somebody? It's dose dependent. So it's not the, the, the individual dose of the drug is not necessarily related to the maximum effect. What we're considering here is how much of it do you have to give for them to get this response? So that's potency. You know, in reality, these two things are discussed together, right? We want to know how good is it at relieving symptoms and also how much of it do you have to give somebody? So it's this is really kind of an academic conversation to separate them because in reality, these two um, these two concepts are are related integrally. 
right? They're very related to one another. So here's a little visual to help us to sort of see this. So we've got two drugs in blue. Here's drug A. This would be a dose response curve, right? So you administer the dose, right? So this is increasing doses. And then here's the intensity of the response. So this would be the efficacy, right? So when we administer the drug, we get a response. When we administer more of this drug, higher dose, you get the same response. So of the two, which one's more potent? Hopefully you're saying, oh yeah, this one's more potent because you don't have to give as much of it to get up here. Whereas this one, you have to give a larger dose, but you get up here. In terms of efficacy, which one's more efficacious? Which one is better at producing a response? Hopefully you're saying drug A and drug B are equally e efficacious. They ha they're right, they're right. If you drew, were to draw a line here, you'd see that they both top out at what looks to be somewhere around maybe 85%, right? So they are equally efficacious, but drug A is more potent than drug B. Over here, we have, again, drug A and drug B. Drug, whoops, sorry. <laughs> drug A climbs first, so it's more potent, and also it tops out near 100%, which you're never going to see, but 100%. So drug A is both more potent and more efficacious. If we were to, to put lay drug B, this line over the drug A line, and then top off here, if they started climbing together, we would say they were equally potent, but drug A was more efficacious. So hopefully those that helps a little bit. Again, at any point, if you have any questions, make sure that you communicate those with me. Okay, I'm going to stop this video and I'm going to pick up, just because of, I'm trying to keep these things a reasonable length of time, I'm going to pick up in the next one with some significant drug legislation.